Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the clamp theory of synaptic uh, snare proteins. Okay, so we have seen, basically, that uh, uh, the clamp theory is this theory that you have this protein complexin which uh, binds in between the um, membrane of the synaptic vesicle and the membrane of the cell and stores basically the zippering up of these core snare complexes and stops the two membranes of the synaptic vesicle and the plasma membrane getting too close together that they actually start fusing. So basically it means that the um, synaptic vesicle is docked at the membrane without it actually fusing. And that's important. We need that um, to uh, basically uh, get a readily releasable vesicle pool because we want um, synaptic vesicles which are mounted and ready on the active zone of the presynaptic membrane but we don't want them to actually fuse with the presynaptic membrane until an action potential arrives. So what I'm going to show you now is an experiment that was done by Rothman that shows that if you don't have something like the clamp uh, theory in operation then uh, the synaptic vesicles will just fuse with the plasma membrane. So, what did Rothman do then? Basically, what Rothman did was he got two liposomes. So he made balls of lipids, basically. Well, they're not quite balls of lipids. So let me explain what a liposome is. A liposome is basically a tiny little um, vesicle, if you like. It's got a phospholipid bilayer. So it's got a phospholipid bilayer. And it's just a circular chamber, basically. Well, a spherical chamber, in fact, because it's three-dimensional. And it's contained within this phospholipid bilayer here. So this is a liposome. Okay. Now, you can take two of these liposomes. So we'll take another one over here. And again, I'll draw its phospholipid bilayer by putting two of these. Okay. And... Into one of the liposomes, you put synaptobrevin. So here is synaptobrevin, and we'll put in specifically the synaptobrevin involved in um, in uh, neurotransmission, which is synaptobrevin two. Okay, so this is the protein synaptobrevin two, which we would usually call a V snare or even an R snare, as I taught you in the previous video. So this is synaptobrevin two. Okay, now. What we also put into this vesicle, it, well actually I'll talk about what we're going to put in this vesicle and then I'll talk about the next bit because that's a bit more complicated what we're also going to put into that vesicle. So the other thing we're going to put into vesicle 2, so let's call this lysosome, sorry, liposome 1 and let's call this liposome 2. Now into liposome 2 what we're going to put is syntaxin, okay? So here are our syntaxin 1, so this is syntaxin 1 here, and we're also going to put SNAP25 in there. So here's SNAP25, let's say. Okay, right, so let me colour these in. So we'll have SNAP25 in green here, providing it's two alpha helices. And we have syntaxin 1 in blue. And you remember I told you that when you have syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 in a membrane together, they will start forming complexes amongst themselves already. So, now, what would we expect to happen if our theory was correct? We would expect that if we mix these two lys uh, liposomes together, that they would form, um, they would form core snare complexes, and then what would happen is the two liposomes would fuse together because if there's no clamp proteins put in, because I'm not putting any clamp proteins in, I'm not putting in this complexin protein, then there will be nothing to stop these uh, core snare complexes winding completely up, zippering completely up, and fusing these two membranes together, basically. Okay, so... If we saw that, that would back up our theory that we need some sort of clamp protein in order to stop the snare complexes from fusing the two membranes. So, here's the question. How do we see that liposome 1 has fused with liposome 2? Well, there is a rather ingenious way that Rothman came up of doing this. With, of, doing, of doing this, yeah. Uh, and basically... What you do is you stuff the liposome 1 here, 
absolutely full, and I won't draw too many more um, because it gets tiresome, but you stuff it full of a fluorophore. So this is a fluorophore here. Now let me just explain what a fluorophore is for anyone out there who doesn't know. Okay, so a fluorophore is something that you can fire UV light at, or in fact any, um, it doesn't have to be UV light, you can fire one frequency of light at, so let's say frequency of excitation is how it's usually denoted. You fire this at the fluorophore, the fluorophore um, absorbs this photon at this uh, excitation frequency, and then what it does is a little bit of time later, it re-emits the energy in another frequency, basically. So it, this is the frequency of emission. So it will re-emit another photon uh, at a different frequency. So you fire in a photon of a certain frequency and therefore of a certain energy, and you get out another photon of another frequency. And the frequency that you get out is always lower than the frequency that you put in. Now, frequency is proportional to energy, so that's basically saying that the energy of the photon that you put in is always greater than the energy of the photon that you get out, which is, if you were going to uh, guess uh, one of the two, that would have been what you would have guessed. Okay, right. Uh, now, um, let's say we take a fluorophore where we can fire UV light at it. So we'll fire in UV uh, light, and we might get out blue light, since I've drawn it blue. So, out comes blue light. And blue light has a lower frequency than UV light. Okay? Right. So, um, what happens, however, if you stuff the vesicle full enough of these um, fluorophores? So, you put these fluorophores in a really high density, basically. Then they stop fluorescing. Okay, so if you fire UV at this v liposome, it's not going to shine blue light back at you. The reason is that we put them in at too high densing, density, and this is a phenomenon known as quenching. Now, what's believed to happen is that if you put them in at a very high density like so, then they will start interacting with each other, potentially and their fluorescent properties may well change then. So they may change what, um, what uh, frequencies they absorb, and they may change what frequencies they emit, basically. So their fluorescent properties change if you put them in too high a density, and they stop fluorescing, basically. Okay, so what happens is if these two liposomes now fuse together. So if we mix these two liposomes, one with these synaptobrevins in, uh, synaptobrevin 2s in, and these fluorophores in far really high density, with these liposomes which just contain SNAP25 and syntaxin 1, then what's going to happen? Well, if these two fuse, if, if these two really do fuse, which would indicate that our theory is correct, i.e. that if you just mix the snare proteins together without some protein that's stopping them from actually fusing the two membranes together, then they will actually fuse the membranes together, then what will happen is these two liposomes will fuse. Now what will happen? Well, the fluorophore will now be in a much bigger membrane, so let me draw this. It will be in a bigger liposome. Okay, so basically the density of the fluorophore will now go out, go down rather. The fluorophores will spread out and their density will f much decrease. So the quenching will stop and their fluorescent properties will come back basically. So their fluorescent properties have now come back and when you shine UV light what you will see is uh, blue light coming back, and that will indicate basically to you that liposome 1 has fused with liposome 2, and that confirms that if you just have synaptobrevin 2 in one vesicle and SNAP25 and syntaxin 1 in another vesicle, they will fuse together basically. 
Okay, so that tells us that you need something that stops these uh, snare complexes from fusing the two membranes together. And that backs up the clamp theory, basically. It backs up the fact that these don't just dock the two, vesicle, the two liposomes together. They will fuse them together unless something else stops them from doing so. And that something else, in the clamp theory at least, is suspected to be this... Um, complex in protein. Right, okay, and uh, let me just stress that when he did this experiment, he, when he um, got liposome 1 and liposome 2, where he put fluorophores in liposome 1 and synaptobrevin 2 uh, in, in liposome 1, and then syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 in uh, liposome 2, he did see uh, that the uh, fluorescence of these fluorophores was returned after he mixed the two together, indicating that the two have fused together, and telling us that the, these snare proteins are sufficient to cause fusion on their own, which was something that wasn't known, because when you look in neuron terminals, these dock the two membranes together, but they don't cause fusion. But what this experiment is telling us is that they do cause fusion, and that something must be stopping them from causing fusion in the, um, in the docked vesicles, in the readily releasable vesicle pool.